This is the story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world, the man whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. How far down under the crust of the earth must you go to get an idea of the world a million years ago? I went down just about half a mile. It was far enough. Far enough, even though I had company. The kind of company any guy should like. She was a blonde. A gal named Eva Gaxton, or at least if you like her, may be the reason I never got around to marrying. The type scares me. It also fascinates me, which spells danger any way you look at it. Eva happens to be a natural blonde, though I wouldn't swear to it. She wears her hair down to her shoulder. It suits her that way. When it even looks like rain, she wears a trench coat. And you guessed right. She wears an off-the-shoulder bag. If she were an actress, she'd be cast as an American newspaper woman. The fact is, she is one. Every so often, I run into her. The last time was down in Valparaiso, Chile. I pulled in the day after they'd had a mild earthquake down there. And I met Eva in the most natural place, a bar. Well, tall, dark, slightly gray at the temples, and not too bad looking. You're just the guy I'm looking for. You're very unpopular with me. Go away. Oh, just because you're mad about me. Be quiet. Somebody may believe you. Stop pretending you're not secretly in love with me. You and your infallible woman's instinct. I'll buy you drinks. No, save your money for your old age. Huh. I should live that long. You may. You're lucky. Look, said she, planting one foot firmly on the brass rail. I'll break the news to you very gently. Ah, uh, you've been fired. Worse. I'm married. What? You? Married? Yeah. And it's not funny. Well, how did this happen? Up in Panama. Must have been that lousy moon. You've seen the moon before. They hung a special one out that night. Who's the guy? Steve Courtney. Hmm. You even had to marry a newspaper man. Hmm. Seems to make sense. In Panama. But not in Chile? Married a month and we're washed up. Lasted that long, huh? Well, never mind my trouble. Look, how would you like to explore a thousand leagues under the ground with me, huh? Not even if you were not married. Have you heard the news? No. The earthquake did things up in the hills, opened up the entrance to some subterranean cave. Oh? I'd like to go exploring. They say it's not safe. One more quake and the caves would close up again. And you want to take a chance? Oh, I don't know what I want to do. Oh, why didn't you marry me years ago? You want me to tell you? Never mind. From the hotels and cafes. Within reach of man. A million years of long ago. A lot of people tried to speculate what might be found in the depths of these caves. And how far down they went. Maybe miles under the earth. But no one cared to explore. Just the slightest tremor of the earth could easily close off the cave entrance for another million years. Next day... Eva Gaxton and her brand new husband viewed the situation of the caves from their personal perspective. Where have you been all day? I went up to see the big hole in the ground. Alone? Except for about a hundred other people. Without telling me. Would you have cared to know? Maybe not. That's what I thought. In short, we make a pretty indifferent pair, don't we? It happened awful fast, didn't it? What a jerk I was. Were you? to think you'd give up your job. I never said I would. Man, I could dream, couldn't oh, I? Oh, please. Why should you give it up? There isn't a reason in the world. After all, you make almost three times what I make. It'd be silly to give that kind of money up, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course it would. I... I came up here to ask you something. Go ahead. Steve, I've never written my big story. I've covered big ones. I've had a few exclusives, but I've never written that one big one. If I could, maybe I'd quit then. Quit while I was ahead of the game. Steve, maybe this is it. My big story, that cave. Oh, here it comes. Would you go with me into that cave? Are you out of your mind? I'm not crazy. You're off your rocker. There'll be danger, all kinds of danger. Maybe we get lost down there, never find our way back again. But we'd be sharing a big adventure, Steve. And maybe somewhere along the line we'd find each other again. Let's not find each other again. All right. No, all the offbeat, crazy ideas. I'm an offbeat gal, Steve. I never make much sense. Maybe I'm too romantic. I don't know what I am. It's time you found out. I'm about to, I guess. Eva Gaxton. In trouble.
intrepid newspaper woman defies death to venture into the unknown. Eva, you make me sick. You must hate me. Story of Steve Courtney, third-rate reporter. He married a byline. The closest he ever got to one. All right, Steve. Maybe you are a third-rate reporter. Goodbye, huh? Sure, sure. Goodbye, Eva. Have fun. Steve Courtney was your average nice guy. He did a nice average job. He could be depended upon. The world needs guys like Steve. But he didn't have that spark that Eva had. She was a top operator in the field, a first-class correspondent. Not always too ethical in what she did, if it meant getting a story. But underneath it all, she was a good kid. Kid? She was 32. With 15 years of newspaper experience behind her. About 4 a.m., someone knocked at the door of my room at the hotel. It was Steve, and in a bad mood. Oh, she's smart, you know. She's a dame. A dame knows she'll be rescued if she gets into trouble. A dame always knows that. That's why I despise courageous dames. Because they know somebody will bail them out. Where is Eva? I don't know, but I can guess. And you're worried? Me? Worried about her? Don't make me laugh. When did you last see her? Midnight. She was on her way out. And you waited until now? I came here for laughs, John. I'm not worried. You may not be, but I am. She's gone to that cave, and that's where we're going. The beginning of danger and the peace of the unknown. There's much of these when, in a moment, we hear more in the story of John Steele, adventurer. It was dawn. A lot of people watched. Steve and I lowered ourselves down the walls of the big opening in the earth. About 50 feet down, we stood in the entrance to the first subterranean cave. It was as big as the Yankee Stadium. And there was the remains of a petrified forest in it. It was like looking through a telescope and getting an idea of how the world could have looked a million years ago. The air was cold and damp. The water dripped from the roof. Where did this cave lead to? How far down into the bowels of the earth did it go? What was down there? Eva! Come on, Steve. You must have been crazy to come down here. I'm a guy. I'm with you, but I'm scared out of my life. Yeah, yeah. Come on. How do we know what's over there? We don't. Nobody ever walked here before. Eva did. What do you do with a thing like that? Love and character. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's who you part. Eva! Keep going. Come on. What happens when it rains outside up in those mountains? These caverns get flooded. That's what I thought. Just a careful little thought. Eva! Come on. We ran through the cave towards the sound of the scream. Maybe in another age, the police to see man had trod where we now ran, or the saber-toothed tiger had hunted. But suddenly, the cave ended, and we stood in the entrance to a subterranean tunnel that lost itself into a green darkness. Our flashlight cast a sort of pale mist around us. Eva! Eva! Let's try the tunnel. Let me go first. <laughs> we may hear a lot of queer sounds down here. That was an animal. If it was one, it makes no sense. Anyway, I've got a gun. Come on. No. No, I can't go on. You've got no choice. I can't go on. I'm scared. Imagine what Eva's going through. Stupid little fool. That can come later. Right now, we've got to find her. S suppose it was an animal. A big one. Steve, there are no big animals under the ground. How do you know? What? A hangover from maybe thousands of years ago living in these underground tunnels. Don't be an idiot, Steve. I'm going back. You'll go back alone. All right. Oh, come on. No. She's your wife, Steve. I don't care. Okay, stay here. No, I'm going back. Then go back. I'm, I'm scared. I know. You just told me. Don't go. Don't leave me here. Don't leave me. Stay around, Steve. Come back. Come back. So far and no further. As I said, Steve was the average guy, only he was scared. He was out of his element. I was scared, too. Only I was accustomed to being in jams of all kinds. That was the only difference. Besides, I kept thinking of that blonde hair, and I thought I knew why Eva had forced herself to take this crazy chance. I walked along the tunnel. I could hear water running. I figured I was about half a mile under the earth. Eva! Eva! Can you hear me? Somebody. 
Seema. Seema, say something. Somebody's coming. What? Where are you? I don't think I... You can make it. Seema, keep, keep talking, keep talking. I'm hurt, I guess. I must be hurt awfully badly. I, I can't move. I don't know where I am. Just keep talking. I'll, I'll find you. Better be careful. That's how I fell down here. Yeah, I lost my flashlight. I, I didn't see where I was going. All right, Eva. I can see you now. I can story. It's okay. Hi, John. Hi. We always meet in the darndest places, don't we? Always. We never miss. <laughs> I didn't bring my cigarette with me. Here. You think of everything. Here's a light. Here's a light. Where are you hurt? My legs. My pretty, pretty legs. I can't move. Don't try. I'm glad you came. We'll have to figure something out, won't we? Oh, but not so bad down here. Not so good either. I don't mind it. Crazy, huh? But I don't mind it. I'm not even scared. Just now when I was by myself, I wasn't even scared. That's fine. No. No, you don't understand. You're not scared. I can understand that. That's not really what I mean. No. Kind of peaceful down here. Nobody around. All this rock and the earth. Feel this earth, Johnny. So soft and cool. Yeah, real soft. No taxi cabs down here. No subways. No newspapers. No Sunday drivers either. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I'm not sure. You suppose that was... I don't know. Where's Steve? He went back for help. No. No, he didn't, sir. Yes, he was with me, indeed. I was unconscious for a while. I started coming to like I heard someone yelling at me. It was Steve. He was scared. Oh, it's all right. Why wouldn't he have been scared? I don't blame him. We've got to get out of here. Have we? There must have been a storm up in the mountains. The water's beginning to filter through down here. We've got to get back up with that dump. Why? Because we'll be drowned. This place down here will be flooded. Look at that water already. Eva had fallen onto a ledge. Below the ledge, there was a bottomless space. Above the ledge, there was a 20-foot climb to get back into the tunnel. There were places where you could hang on. Eva could still use her hands, and I somehow managed to pull her up, inch by inch. and action, one leads to the other. And the result we'll hear in a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. The rush of water over the ledge where I'd found Eva would have carried us both to oblivion if we'd stayed there another ten minutes. In the tunnel above the ledge, the water was about a foot deep by the time I was halfway along it. I found a rock formation and hoisted Eva and myself up onto it. That was when I felt my hand come into contact with some alien object. Something small that fell apart as I touched it. 
I turned my flashlight on it. I stared at it for a moment. It had once been a small pearl-handled pocket knife. I was too exhausted to think much about it and put the pieces in my pocket. Eva was suffering with a pain in her leg. I know. I'm okay. We'll have a doctor take care of those legs as soon as we get out of here. We're not getting out, are we? Why not? I feel it. We'll get out. I hope so. For your sake. Thanks. I mean it. Sure you do. Because you went to so much trouble for me. You, you did save my life. It'd be a shame if we didn't get out. Yeah, it would. Oh, poor Steve. He may be trying to help us. No. No one can help us down here. They'll try. They'll have given us up by now. Look. We have to get out of this tunnel. You can't carry me any further. Once we're in the cave, all we have to do is cross it. And we'll be in sound of the people up there. All right. Leave me here. See if you can make it. You think I will leave you? I guess not. Keep that in mind. Mm. Now, try to understand what I'm saying. Oh, what a mess I've got you into. The water's still shallow enough for me to wade. The flashlight. What about it? Shine it that way. What's the matter? I saw something moving in the water. Possible. There. There, look. Oh, a log. No. Oh, it's something alive. Look at it. Alive. Kill it. Kill it. Whatever it is, kill it. Please, don't die. It, it went past us. What was it? What was it? I, I don't know, either. I'm not even sure it was alive. It was. It was a reptile of some sort. Did you see that awful head? Whatever it was, it, it's gone now. But what was it? It's like something out of a nightmare. It may have been a piece of petrified wood, a, you know, twisted into a... Real cuggly shape. No, no, it was making a sound. Well, maybe that was caused by some some very natural phenomenon. There may be more of those awful things around here. Look, look, look. The thing was alive. It wasn't very aggressive. Oh, my leg. My leg. We'll try to make the outer cave. I'm scared. I'm scared. You're in pain. Too much pain. But we can remedy that for a little while, anyway. I hate doing this, Eva. But I must. <laughs> Once more, I carried her. This time, her limp body was over my shoulders. The water in the tunnel was rising rapidly now. I was walking through places where it was knee high. I was sure it was the end of the line. When I did reach the outer cave, it was flooded. It looked like the Colorado Rapids. I found another rock and lifted Eva up on top of it. There wasn't room for me, and I stood there in the water, resting and getting back my breath. It's, it's all right. Uh, we'll be all right. Hello. That was a long time ago. We're in the outer cave now. You hit me. You know why I did it. Yeah, I know. In a minute, we'll try crossing the cave. All that room. We can still make it. What did you have in me? What do you think? I think you're crazy. I think you're crazy about me. <laughs> you're feeling much better. I'm your secret heart. And you know it. Come on. Let's try it again. Don't hit me again. I'll be okay. My legs seem numb now. There's not much pain. Hold on. Sorry, your head has to hang down. I have a... Good view of the water. I'm getting a free shampoo. Every few seconds, I grazed against the petrified tree stump submerged in the water. Once, my foot struck something that was oddly soft. I touched the 
object the second time with my foot and kept walking. I didn't want to think about what I thought it was. Halfway across the subterranean cave, I saw something at the far end. A white, misty light that swung back and forth. Sheila. Yeah, Tony. They lowered a lantern. Lantern? I like the rope, the lantern at the end of it. We're all right. And we can make it the rest of the way. You'll be sure you make it, Tony. We'll both make it. I know. We've got to now. Daddy. Don't worry about it. Sounds like another quake. We're almost out of the cave. Johnny? Yeah, yeah. Well, that big hole in the earth closes up before we get there. Stop using your imagination. No use trying to kid myself at that moment. It was another tremor in the crust of the earth. I could feel the rock grind under my feet and could feel it shaking as I walked through the swirling waters. But I kept my eyes on that swinging lantern ahead. The opening above the cave entrance was still there. I was sure of it. But it could close at any moment, and even I would be trapped. Trapped into eternity under the ground. Another 50 yards. Sure. Uh, you're in pain again. What's the matter? You'll be all right soon. I missed my thought for a minute, Johnny. Don't fight it. I, I have a little strength to fight it. Sorry. What's that? Nothing. Nothing. The lab is still there? Yeah, it's there. If they have any sense, they'll have picked up some kind of litter to pull us up with. Sure. You're all right. Yeah. I guess you are. Hang on, baby. Hang on. Just a while longer. Just a while longer. Taking a standby for adventure with John Steele. And in a moment, John Steele returns with more of his story. And starred as John Steele on this transcribed adventure was Don Douglas. Script was by John Fleming. And the entire production was under the direction of Robert Monroe. And of course, all names and characters heard are fictitious. And any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. But here again is John Steele. It was six months before Eva could walk again. At that time, a group of scientists toyed with the idea of an expedition down into those subterranean caves and passages. But the rainy season had come, and the expedition had to wait. All it took was just one more tremor, and the crack in the earth closed again. That ended plans for any expedition. For the moment. Steve Courtney didn't get back when he left me in that cave. It must have been his body my foot touched in the water. There's just one thing that baffles me, however. The little pocket knife I found. How it had got down there in that place? By human hand? Or in the stomach of some animal or reptile? When I show it to people, they just look at it, shake their heads. For me, I have no explanation for it. Oh, yes, Eva wrote her big story. She's still a newspaper gal. I still run into it here and there. Well, this is John Steele. Be around next week, huh? And don't forget now, adventure is where you find it. But don't look for it. It may find you.